Today, we will talk about the Earth and the Geographic Coordinates System. Now, before looking at more advanced concepts of air navigation, we must first look at the place where we are going to navigate, which is the Earth. The Earth is the third planet from the Sun in the solar system, and its shape is almost spherical, since it has a polar diameter of 12,714 kilometers and an equatorial diameter of 12,756 kilometers. So as we can see, the Earth is slightly flattened at the poles and elongated at the equator, which gives it an oval shape, known as an oblate spheroid. The reason why the Earth has this shape has to do with the centrifugal force it experiences when it rotates on its own axis. This movement is called rotation, and it takes around 24 hours for the Earth to make a complete revolution around its own axis. Now, the points through which this axis of rotation passes are known as the North and South Poles, which are often used as reference in navigation. On the other hand, the side towards which the Earth rotates is known as East, while the opposite side is known as West. Now, apart from this rotational movement, the Earth also moves around the Sun, in a movement called translation. It takes around 365 days for the Earth to make a complete elliptical orbit around the Sun, and the orbital plane in which the Earth moves is known as the ecliptic. Now, it is important to mention that the Earth's axis of rotation is inclined in relation to the ecliptic plane. This inclination is around 23.5 degrees as we can see, and it is responsible for the seasons throughout the year and other phenomena, such as the solstices and equinoxes. These phenomena occur because the solar radiation received by a certain area of the Earth changes throughout the year, which has significant implications for weather conditions. However, we will not go into detail with this. Now that we know some basic facts about the Earth, we can now look at the cardinal points. The main ones are north, south, east, and west. These points are used for orientation and to express directions on the Earth's surface. So let's define them. East represents the direction in which the Earth rotates, and therefore the west represents the opposite direction to the Earth's rotation. The north is the pole on the left when we are facing east, and the south is the pole diametrically opposite to the North Pole. Now, apart from these, there are other points known as quadrantal points, which are the intermediate directions between the four main cardinal points. These quadrantal points are northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. And at the same time, these quadrantal directions can be divided even further. For example, between north and northeast we find the north-northeast. Between the northeast and the east we find the east-northeast, and so on. So as previously mentioned, this system can be used to express the direction to a point in relation to another point. Let's look at an example. Here we have two points on the Earth's surface. So if we want to express the relative direction from the red point to the green point using the cardinal direction system, then we can say that the green point is to the northeast of the red point. However, if we want to express the relative direction from the green point to the red point, then the direction will be the opposite, since as we can see, the red point is to the southwest of the green point. The same happens with these other two points, in this case for someone located at the orange point, the yellow point is to the north, while for someone at the yellow point, the orange point is to the south. So as we could see, the cardinal point system is used to express relative directions, rather than for expressing exact positions on the Earth. For that, we need a position reference system where each position is precisely and unambiguously defined on the Earth's surface. An example of a position reference system is the Cartesian system. In this case, two reference axes are used, with which it is possible to express any position precisely by means of Cartesian coordinates. For example, if we want to express the position of this red point, we can observe that it is located at 4 units on the x-axis and at 3 units on the y-axis, so the Cartesian coordinates for this point would be x4 and y3. So using these axes as reference, we can accurately and unambiguously express the position of any point within the scale, as we can see here. 
However, something important to keep in mind is that this Cartesian system only works on a two-dimensional surface, so it could not be correctly applied to the Earth, since it is a three-dimensional sphere. However, despite this, the system used on Earth is quite similar, since it uses two axes as reference and is known as the geographic coordinate system. The geographic coordinates are a position reference system that allows any position on the Earth to be expressed in terms of latitude and longitude, which are equivalent to the units of the X and Y axis in the Cartesian system. However, the difference is that since the Earth is spherical, instead of using linear units as in the Cartesian system, angular units are used. But we will look at this in detail later, now the important thing is to know that latitude is used to express how far north or south a point is. While longitude is used to express how far east or west a point is. Let's take a closer look at the reference axes used in this system. As in the Cartesian system, two reference axes are used from which latitude and longitude are measured. These axes are the equator line and the Greenwich meridian. Now, in order to understand how this reference axis are defined, first we have to look at the definition of great circle and small circle. A great circle is a plane on a sphere, which passing through its center, divides it into two equal parts as we can see in this example. It is important to note that we can divide the Earth in any direction, as long as it is divided into two equal parts, we will obtain a great circle. On the other hand, a small circle is a plane on a sphere which do not passes through its center and therefore divides it into two unequal parts. So in other words, any circle on the Earth that is not a great circle will be a small circle. Here we can see some examples of great and small circles. With this in mind, the equator line is defined as a great circle perpendicular to the Earth's axis of rotation which divides the Earth into two equal hemispheres. And if we compare it to the Cartesian system, it would be the equivalent to the x-axis. On the other hand, the Greenwich meridian, also known as the prime meridian, is defined as a semi-great circle that joins the north and south poles and passes through Greenwich in England. This would be the equivalent to the y-axis in a Cartesian system. With this, we have the two reference axes that are used in the geographic coordinates system. However, these axes are also used to divide the Earth into four hemispheres. This way, the equator line divides the Earth into the northern and southern hemispheres, while the prime meridian divides it into the western and the eastern hemispheres. Now, due to the size of the Earth, it is common to use secondary reference lines known as parallels and meridians. The meridians are semi-great circles that join the north and south poles, and they are measured in degrees in relation to the prime meridian. These lines are used as a reference for the longitude. On the other hand, the parallels are small circles parallel to the equator line, which are measured in degrees in relation to the equator line. These lines are used as a reference for the latitude. The resulting grid defined by the parallels and meridians is known as the geographic graticule or grid, which is often found on maps and charts. Having seen all this, let's now look at the definition of latitude and longitude. The latitude is defined as the angular distance between the equator line and a point on the Earth's surface, measured in degrees, minutes and seconds of arc. So in simpler words, it measures how far north or how far south a point is. Now, as we can see in the image on the left, the latitude is actually an angle, measured from the center of the Earth, where the equator line represents zero degrees. In this order of ideas, latitude equals zero degrees at the equator, and it increases gradually until 90 degrees at each of the poles. So then we say that the latitude goes from 0 to 90 degrees north or south. On the other hand, the longitude is defined as the angular distance between the prime meridian and a point on the Earth's surface, measured in degrees, minutes and seconds of arc. So in simpler words, it measures how far east or how far west a point is. Now, as we can see in the image on the left, longitude is actually an angle measured from the center of the Earth where the prime meridian represents zero degrees. In this order of ideas, longitude equals zero degrees at the prime meridian, 
and it increases gradually until 180 degrees in the opposite side of the planet. So then we say, that longitude goes from 0 to 180 degrees east or west. In these other images we can more clearly see why it goes from 0 to 180 degrees either side. In summary then, here we can graphically see how latitude and longitude are measured, and why angles are used instead of linear units. With all this information, we should be able to locate any point on a map by means of the geographic coordinate system. Here then we have a world map with its respective reference axes, so to determine the coordinates of a point on this map, we do it in the same way as in a Cartesian plane. For example, let's determine the coordinates for this point. Before proceeding, it is important to mention that the latitude always goes first. So then the latitude for this point would be 40 degrees north, and the longitude would be 100 degrees west. Now that we know how to do it, let's determine the coordinates of these other points. For this other position, the latitude would be 20 degrees north, and the longitude 40 degrees east. For this other one the coordinates would be 10 degrees south and 120 degrees east. And finally, for this one, the coordinates would be 60 degrees south and 40 degrees west. Now, so far it seems that this system is quite accurate. However, if we zoom in, we can see that between each degree of latitude and longitude there is a considerably long distance. Specifically, at the equator, the distance between each degree of longitude or latitude is 60 nautical miles. This way, we can accurately express the positions where the parallels and meridians intersect. However, if we want to determine the coordinates of an intermediate position, we would not be able to do it precisely. For that reason, in order to increase the accuracy, the sexagesimal system is used. Basically this refers to the use of degrees, minutes, and seconds of arc in the geographic coordinates. Here, each degree of latitude or longitude can be divided into 60 minutes, which is also an angular measurement unit. So in simpler words, 1 degree equals to 60 minutes. Now, at the same time, a minute of arc can be divided into 60 seconds. With these smaller units, it is now possible to express positions much more accurately. Let's look at an example. As we can see, this scale includes the minutes and seconds of arc between the degrees, so this way if we want to express the position of this red point, we would say that its latitude is 51 degrees, 0 minutes, and 15 seconds north, while the longitude is 11 degrees, 1 minute, and 30 seconds east. In the same way, this other point would be at 51 degrees, 2 minutes, and 0 seconds north, and 11 degrees, 1 minute, and 0 seconds east. With this in mind, let's determine the coordinates for the following points. The point A has a latitude of 1 degree. Now, to know if it is north or south, we have to look at the arrangement of the parallels. If they increase as we move up, that means that the equator line is below us, and therefore we are in the northern hemisphere. Now, in terms of longitude it is at 74 degrees, and to know if it is west or east, we look at the arrangement of the meridians, if they increase to the left, that means that the prime meridian is to the right of us, which means that we are in the western hemisphere. So in summary the coordinates of the point A are 1 degree north, and 74 degrees west. Now, the latitude of the point B would be 1 degree south, and the longitude is right in the middle between 73 and 74 degrees west. So using the sexagesimal system, we would say that it is 73 degrees and 30 minutes west. Finally, for the point C, the latitude would be 0 degrees and 30 minutes south, and the longitude 72 degrees and 30 minutes west. Let's now look at a more practical example. Here we have a map with the corresponding grid of parallels and meridians, and we must determine the coordinates for the towns of Georgetown, Fairview, and Greenville. So let's start with Georgetown, in this case we can deduct that we are in the northern hemisphere since the parallels increase as we move up. So the latitude would be 28 degrees and 30 minutes north. Now, we can determine that we are in the western hemisphere since the meridians increase to the left. 
so the longitude would be 74 degrees and 22 minutes west. Now, for Fairview, the coordinates would be 27 degrees 45 minutes north and 73 degrees 1 minute west. And finally, for Greenville, the coordinates are 29 degrees 21 minutes north and 73 degrees 35 minutes west. Now, the current geographic coordinate system is based on a model called the World Geodetic System of 1984, which was established as the standard by the ICAO for air navigation purposes. Now, it is necessary to develop a geodetic model because the Earth is not a perfect sphere and therefore the geoid used as a reference in the coordinate system must be adapted as closely as possible to the actual shape of the Earth, as we can see in this example. In the case of the World Geodetic System 84, it has an error of less than 2 cm and is used by current GNSS systems such as the GPS. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.